How can the British monarchy answer for a legacy paved by global colonialism and destructive self-interest? The death of Queen Elizabeth II ended the longest reign of any British monarch in history and invited a wave of discontent and criticism surging toward the steps of Buckingham Palace. In order for the monarchy to change and to survive the 21st century and beyond, they need to allow those who they have oppressed, marginalized, silenced, or erased in the past to have a voice. I think it's extremely difficult for the royal family to really change or to atone for the sins of their ancestors because of the type of uh, institution that they are, because this is an institution that in many ways is inherently problematic due to these medieval concepts about royal blood, about royal privilege, about the fact that royals are separated not only from their subjects, but also from the rest of humanity. So how do you take a family and an institution that is a not only ancient, but also a multi-billion dollar global industry and ask them to make a substantial change that will actually change people's opinion. I think they would have to dismantle the institution itself. Brooke Newman, PhD, is an associate history professor at Virginia Commonwealth University. She's currently writing a book titled The Queen's Silence, The Hidden History of the British Monarchy and Slavery. There are older members of the older generation who feel some sentimental attachment to Queen Elizabeth herself her person. But this was very strategic on the part of the monarchy because the queen, during the decolonization process, her symbol was everywhere. She was supposed to represent continuity in a rapidly changing world. She was comforting and reassuring. At the same time, though, younger generations in particular have realized that the symbols and legacies of colonialism and of the empire are not putting food on the table. They are not changing people's everyday lives. They are not improving conditions for her subjects and now King Charles subjects in the Commonwealth realms. In her book, Newman highlights some of the sins of their ancestors that are at the root of the issues critics and protesters have with the monarchy today. This is not a history that's hidden per se in the sense that you have to dig around in the archives to find it. It's that it hasn't been taught, it hasn't been discussed, it hasn't been officially and fully acknowledged, and it certainly has not been apologized for. Right after she took the throne, there was a rebellion of the Mau Mau in Kenya, which was brutally suppressed, and many Kenyans were tortured and killed by British forces. How aware Queen Elizabeth was of this at the time is hard to say, but she certainly became aware of it later. And I think this is what has led to the critical shift now. The, the fact that this history is becoming more widely known that views are changing about colonialism and the mistreatment of enslaved and subjugated peoples across the globe because the British Empire covered a quarter of the world prior to when Elizabeth took the throne. And then really the catalyst has been the 2020 Black Lives Matter movement, which I think has brought all of these painful histories and legacies to the forefront of national debate in Britain, but around the world as well. With a global reckoning at Charles's doorstep, Newman has some advice for the new king. If King Charles wanted to strike a bold new tone for his reign and for the future of the monarchy in the 21st century and beyond, he would immediately apologize for and acknowledge this painful history and particularly the crown's role in that history and in the slave trade and in the systemic racism and inequality that have resulted from colonial slavery. I think it's a question of whether or not he's willing to take on this issue and embrace it as fundamental to the survival of the institution itself. If the Crown does not want to engage in a good faith attempt to acknowledge this and reach out to these former slave colonies in particular, then they deserve some of the negative criticism that they're getting and the potential unraveling of this post-imperial world that they have constructed that has enabled them to maintain their influence.